In this video, we're going to talk about what is probably the most well-known CPU bug in the semiconductor industry, known as the Pentium FDIV, or Floating Point Division, bug. Now, this was something that plagued the original P5 and P54C line of Pentium processors. The P5 was, of course, the socket 4 Pentiums that had the gold tops with the 60 and 66 megahertz versions. And then you had the P54C, which introduced socket 5. And you had the 75, 90, and 100 megahertz Pentiums. Again, these lines were affected by the bug. So, a little history on this. Of course, they had the Intel 486 processor, and Intel was looking for a more powerful chip to upgrade it, so they developed the socket 4 system to replace the older socket 3 that 486 used, and they needed a new processor, so they developed the Pentium to use the socket 4, and it would have a 60 megahertz CPU clock. Now, the system here that I'm showing this on is a socket 4 system with one of those gold top Pentium 60s. I also have some socket 5 75 megahertz processors, unfortunately. Those processors are not really functioning because they've got quite a bit of damage on their pins. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to ever check those ones out for this bug. But I do know this one has the bug, so this is what we're going to demonstrate it on. Now going back to history, I brought a professor up at Lynchburg College, which is now today known as the University of Lynchburg, Thomas Nicely, a mathematician there. So naturally he does a lot of stuff with numbers and he was doing long division arithmetic on a computer that was running one of these socket 4 Pentiums. He also used computers at the college there that ran 486s and others with Pentium clones like ones made by Advanced Micro Devices AMD or even Cyrix back in the day. And he noticed that on the Pentium machine as divisions were going on and on, he noticed he started seeing computational errors that didn't come out the way they were supposed to. You know, the numbers being generated for the results were not what they were expected to be. But the surrounding computers, like the ones running 486s or Pentium clones, the numbers were coming out the way they were supposed to. So that kind of raised an eyebrow. So nicely, you know, got on the computer there and emailed some certain people, including some tech people. I was like, hmm, can you look at your Pentium system, socket 4 system, and try out this number or this program? Because he did end up writing a specific program that tested for the Pentium FDIV bug, and we'll be looking at that here as well. So, do this calculation. Then people that did this calculation on their socket 4 Pentiums were also seeing this error, and then it started spreading around. And eventually it got picked up by the news media, and then pretty much the whole world knew about it by then. What really probably made it so well known is Intel's response to it. So when Intel became aware of it, when it became so widespread through the media and everything throughout the tech community, you know, Intel said, well, you know, it's a, okay, there's a bug in the processor, and... You know, for the average user, you're not going to ever experience it, etc., etc. And long story short, the uh, the tech community didn't like that response. You know, Intel was pretty much acknowledging it, but blowing it off, saying we're not, not really going to do anything about it. Eventually, they had to cave in, and by December of 94, they were doing a voluntary recall of all the affected Pentium processors with the FDIV bug. This processor that's in here was not voluntarily recalled, so we're able to look at that. So that's pretty much how that is, and I will say Intel did take a pretty big hit on that for both their reputation and stock and everything. $475 million hit, that's about $800 million if you looked at it in today's money. And manufacturers like IBM stopped selling computers with the affected Pentiums. Of course, their stock price went down, which probably the investors didn't like. And... Yeah, it pretty much hurt Intel's reputation for a while. But anyway, now we're going to actually look at the bug. We pretty much talked about our history there in a nutshell. Nice little Navratil software system information program here with the processor data. So it tells us it is an Intel Pentium. 
60 megahertz family 5 model 1 so that tells us that it is one of the early Pentium 60s that was not corrected for and it tells us again it's a P5 architecture so again that's what it is because the P54C's were the socket 5 ones that superseded it tells us what that reading etc etc but we pretty much know that and we've got all the little things that tells us about what the processor can do and again part of the reason that Intel also developed this processor is they wanted a faster floating point system than what the 486 had and they went to a whole new type of algorithm that could do two calculations I think at once as opposed to one at a time that the 486 had so that kind of set the standard for what ended up happening that caused the problem in the first place so look at the system manager here we can look at a numeric data processor and one of the things I will mention is software eventually accommodated for handling the bug when it came out Windows 95 here this is the original version of 95 so it's not OSR2 or version A, B, C, whatever but it says here in the diagnostics that it ran on the process, the microprocessor's floating point unit that it has sometimes the ability to compute inaccurate results when dividing large numbers and we have the ability to disable it or use it only if the processor passes all the diagnostics of course that will result in a pretty good performance hit on a computer if you you know nullify the use of the floating point unit on it but to check for it we can do something with the Windows calculator because in Windows 95 the Windows calculator uses the floating point unit again newer software like Windows 98 and operating systems that came after 95 essentially accommodated for that and no longer used the floating point unit so what most people had to do give my numpad on here there's a common number that you would take to do the long division that would go to the erroneous array to trigger the bug. So you would take 4,195,835 and divide that by 3,145,727. And the result it would give you is 1.333790. And that's actually not what it's supposed to be because it's supposed to be 1.3382. So, that, of course, is being affected by the Pentium bug. Now, I don't believe I have any software on here that can do it. I wonder, Microsoft Works that came on this package bell is probably too old still. So, let's just see. Because I think Microsoft Works here is too old, and we will still probably get the wrong answer on it. But... For the sake of things, let's find out. Yeah, it's still too old. It's still giving us the wrong answer. But I do have a video of this showing it with the system head 98, showing how the Windows calculator accommodated for it, and then using an old version of Lotus 123 Sheets. Now I'm going to take, let's see, where is my bug testing disk? Yes. So we got a disk here with bug testing that has Nicely's program on there. And we can run that. And of course that will tell us what we already know, but it will give us the official program that was used back in the day to check for this bug. So FGIB. And the program he made was called Pentbug, a very simple program. We run Pentbug in Windows here, and it gives us this printout. It says, this system produces the erroneous result of 256, which should be 0. Because, again, when we do PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, we do the division in the parentheses here first and then we multiply it by this number and what happens is is it ends up being 
a little smaller than what the beginning number is here and then when we do the subtraction we end up with 256 left over so this easily checks for the FDIV bug and this was the official again, official program that nicely made that he distributed out to people to be able to test on their Pentiums along with any 486's or Pentium clones if you do this on a system that doesn't have the bug it will obviously put zero there and so it's telling us that the flawed Pentium processor. But really, that's all there is to the pretty much well known Pentium FDIV bug that affected the P5 and P54C processors. Now, I will say that this is not the only division error that. Intel has there are other bugs that we will look at in the future that is also floating point related and Intel nearly had this happen again with a major recall when they were developing the Pentium 4 because when the Pentium 4 was being developed they actually detected bugs in the processor because one of the things that came out of this whole thing with the Pentium FDIV bug is basically verification standards to make sure that the processors were free of bugs and didn't have any you know inconsistencies or flaws in them and they used that to detect bugs in the Pentium 4 with its development that if it had gotten out they pretty much would have had another massive processor recall with the Pentium 4 after its release so they, they managed to avoid that but again it's this is not the only Pentium bug out there so we're gonna look at some others in future videos but for now that is the Pentium floating point division bug